Hello and welcome to episode 263 guys and girls. Right, for this video I'm going to be filming a three day stroke three night session and I'm back on the banks of linear fisheries again. I know I said at the end of my last video I was probably going to be on the syndicate this week but unfortunately the fish decided to spawn there so uh Bob's uh you know rightly shut the lake for a week while they uh, get on with it and then recover. So as I said yeah I'm at linear fisheries again kind of last night you know I didn't know what I was going to do so I just kind of looked through linear see what was available. I was hoping to get back on tar farm again one of the lakes kind of after the last session kind of you know I'd had a look round and sort of picked out a few lakes and swims that I'd wanted to fish all the ones that I had my eye on in that last session were all booked up, so I'm back on Hunt's Corner again. Normally get one or two sessions in on here each year, and well, I suppose this is it. I'm in Peg 4, as that Hunt's Corner is part of the booking system now on the catch app, so, so I knew I could get down here and I, I had me swim waiting for me. So I'm not fishing yet guys, like I said, I'm just in the middle of getting everything set up at the moment. Everything's a bit of a jumble behind the camera. So I thought I'd get the intro done and then uh, once I'm organised we can start showing you what I'm up to. Right, so I'm going to crack on with getting set up, so let's go fishing. Oh, and it's bloody hot as well by the way guys. Right guys, I'm now ready to cast out all three rods. We're all uh, rigged up and baited up. I've just set up the old uh, fluorocarbon D-rigs again. Uh, yellow seafood dumbbell wafters. No particular reason again for picking, for picking these rigs first. It was, uh, you know, two videos ago when I was on Oxley's, they done well. All right, they didn't work on the last session at Tile Farm, but but it was kind of the rigs that kind of I already had set up ready to go in my tackle box so I've just gone with it as my starter rig. Those of you who follow me and have seen that I've done well on, on this lake in the past will know it's normally PVA bags I, I fish on here. And I probably will go to PVA bags eventually but um, I haven't got any tied up at the moment so the quickest rigs to get fish in were these ones. So. As I said, we are ready to cast out. I haven't done any wraps, I'm just going to pub chuck them about halfway out, which I already know is kind of like the, the spot to fish on, on Hunt's Corner. Uh, I am seeing fish on and near the surface, so probably later on in this session I'll, I might switch to zig rigs, but we'll see how it goes. Even in the past when I've seen fish on the surface in here, I've always still caught on the bottom no matter what the weather, so I'm not worried about fishing on the bottom, even though I'm seeing fish on the top. So. Right, first cast. Second rod, as I said, as with the first rod, I'm just pod trucking them at the moment just to get fish in. Okay, with this new booking system, the uh, session on Hunt's Corner now starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. And if you do a 24 hour session, well, it's 23, you have to pack up at nine o'clock in the morning. But I'm doing three days, so I don't have to pack up to nine o'clock on Friday. But uh, yeah, I was saying, um, my session started at 10 o'clock and it's only just gone 11 o'clock now. So, so 
in just over a little over an hour I'm already fishing guys which I think is a new record for me <laughs> all right third and final rod guys I can see some fish showing out there there's a coot out there it's probably out of shot on the camera but uh, I'm seeing some fish out that way so it's just Oh, yeah, that's not bad. About two foot to the right of the coop. <laughs> and guys, so now the rods are out and before I do get their camp set up, I'm going to uh, knock up a bit of a spod mix. I mean, linear fishing wouldn't be linear fishing without a good old spod mix. So... I'm just going to make up a uh, sort of a typical linear spod mix, which is, you know, most people know as a sort of a particle mix. So, coconut hemp, that's angling direct zone one. I like that one because of all the little, you know, the little bits you get with a coconut in it. Actually, I had this hemp satami van for uh, well, quite a while. I can't even remember how long, to be fair. And then, before I come to me swim, I popped in the old linear shop and picked up a jar of the mainline power particles. Nice one, that one. That's a sort of a good mix of all sorts of uh, particles in this jar. And then of course, because it's the mainline one, it uh, it's activated with the old cell. So, so I'm not going to be shy. Whole lot can go in, apart from them last few bits that are still stuck in the bottom. And then of course, that good old bag of supermarket sweet corn. No spod mix would be complete without a good old cheap bag of sweet corn. Right. And then just to zhuzh the mix up a, a little bit. I don't know what's in there, 250 mil or so I'm guessing, but hemp oil. That's gonna put all that in. And that. It's probably, like I say, your, your good old typical linear spod mix. Lots of different particles, especially with that mainline one. There we go, guys. So, I'm gonna just mix that up a little bit more just to make sure all that hemp oil is. coating every little bit of particle in the bucket but, but yeah there we go one spod mix made and then sometime later on we will uh fish properly as in measuring up the rods how far they go out so the spod mix can go out over the top but yeah what's that probably What's one of them? It measured it in litres. That's five litres of hemp. Three litres of that hemp mainline particle and then a kilo of corn. So, I don't know what's that. One, I don't know. But, that bucket's about half full now, so. Right, let's wash all this oil off me hands.
and then now we can get the camp set up. Right guys, so as you can see the rods are wound in. What time is it? It is four o'clock. So yeah, so the rods have been out now five hours and nothing has happened. But no, I've just spent the last couple of hours um, sort of preparing everything for how I actually want to fish this session. So I've just been uh, the last couple of hours tying up some PVA bag rigs and then making up the PVA bags. I've made six up, so three obviously to go out and then three for the recasts or whenever they're needed. So I've, uh, I've switched to fake single yellow sweet corn in solid PVA bags. Uh, a method that has worked time and time again for me on this lake. Obviously we've seen the spod mix that I made up earlier on when some of that goes over. You know, my hook bait will mimic what's in the spod mix. And also when I wound my rods in, the uh, craze are obviously very uh, prevalent at the moment because a couple of my baits had been uh, nibbled by little claws, so shall we say. So, uh, so yeah, so moving over onto imitation corn is probably a good move just to stop those little claws nibbling my baits away. So, uh, right, I have fished this swim before and I do know the mark I've done well on is 10 and a half to 11 wraps out. So just to make sure, because there is a bit of weed out there at the moment, I've uh, just wrapped up my marker to 11 wraps. And before I put the rods out on that spot, just to double check, I'm gonna have a, a quick do feel the lead down a couple of uh, comments on a couple of my last videos people have commented saying oh when I cast or whatever so no why don't you feel the lead down properly I do <laughs> trust me I do it probably just doesn't look like it with me cack and the way I do it but If I'm fishing a situation where I need to fill the lead down. Dunk. Oh, that was a nice drop. Yeah. Yeah, trust me, people, I do fill the lead down. Like I so, sometimes just because of the way I cast or the way I hold the rod, it might not look like I do, but I do. And that is clear out there, so definitely don't have to worry about weed out there. Right, we'll have one more cast just to make sure where I'm going to aim the left hand rod is going to be clear of weed. Oh. Well I'll have to wrap that up again because the line come out the clip. But We'll do a few pullbacks and as long as it's clear, then I'm happy to say me 11 wrap spot. Yeah, that's definitely clear, so, yep, so I'm happy to fish all three rods at 11 wraps where I know it's clear. I say, I ain't worried about the depths, it's more the, uh, the range and being free of weed I'm worried about which they are so we can now get them uh, PVA bags out and guys first PVA bag ready to go out so I go just loop to looping them on nice big loop on the end of my main line so when it comes to a uh, PVA bag changing time it's nice and easy just to loop one off and then loop another one on so that's the PVA bag, Ian. 
as I said earlier on, if you see that yellow bit of fake sweet corn and uh, I've just uh, give it a little bit of injection of oil as well just to uh, you know, flavoured oil just to give it a bit of a, a boost before it goes out and before it does go out I must remember to wrap it up because uh, I haven't done that yet which because I'm going to spot afterwards obviously things need to be accurate so let's get the wraps done and then we'll get it out <laughs> all right right hand first and uh i've got three certain trees picked out what i'm going to cast to so i know i'm going to be casting to the right same spots and you know to the baited spots eventually once the spot's gone out Right, third and final rod guys, and then if, unless any fish come along, I'm not going to touch the rods for the rest of the evening and the night, obviously, being it plastic, imitation hook baits, they're everlasting, they're never going to uh, lose their uh, buoyancy or anything like that, so... Right then guys, time to put some bait out. As much as I really don't want to at the moment in this heat. It's uh yeah, it's like five o'clock now and it's absolutely sweltering. But I don't want to leave it any longer before putting me bait out. So I thought that little tip I picked up off of Wayne a couple of weeks ago little spray bottle and rather than having to dunk your whole reel line or trying to <laughs> splash it in the margins if the margins are a bit awkward little spray bottle <laughs> to spray the line easy <laughs> thank you very much Wayne that's a good little little tip that is. Oh, yeah. I'm planning on doing six bods per rod to start off with guys. Right guys, that's three on the right hand rod. So as I said, I'm gonna do six per rod, so I've got 12, 15 more spawns to do. I'm not gonna film 15 more spawns, cause, you know, once you've seen three, <laughs> you've seen 15 really. Right, I'm gonna carry on with this. And then, uh, yeah, then get back in the shade. <laughs> Ah, good evening guys and girls and uh, yeah nothing has happened apart from I've let me barbecue hmm 
lovely big sirloin steak. It's been so hot today, I didn't even feel like lighting the barbecue to be fair. But the only food I've brought with me is barbecue food, so unless I want to go hungry, I didn't have a choice. But uh, And at this point in the video, I have to give a big shout out to my, to my missus. Because I forgot to bring any drinks with me. And my missus only works like 15 minutes away in Whitney. So on her lunch break, she popped out to the shops and brought me uh, half a dozen bottles of cider. So, so thank you very much, Emma, my darling, for bringing me some ciders when I forgot to buy some. But uh, yeah, it's all quite still fishing wise. A few of the other guys on the lake have passed by. They've been on kind of a night or two already. They've said, while I've been here, it has been quiet during the day. And any bites that they've had have come either during the night or first thing in the morning. So, uh, so hopefully this quiet spell that I've had today is just, just the way it is for the daytime at the moment. And hopefully the fish will come tonight. I don't care what time of day I catch fish, as long as I catch fish. Uh, good evening guys, and obviously still nothing has happened at the moment. Uh, you wouldn't think it, but it's quarter past ten. I say you wouldn't think it, because looking what my camera sees, it's looking quite light out still. But, uh, I mean, it, there is still a fair bit of light. But because of my camera's function where it can see brighter and low light levels, it's, uh, it makes it look lighter than what it is. But, but it is still, fair. like I say, for quarter past, twenty past ten, it's still quite light. Today is actually summer solstice day, so, uh, so it's the, the longest day of daylight hours today. <laughs> Starts getting days start getting shorter from tomorrow. <laughs> oh, doom and gloom. But uh, yeah, because it is gone ten o'clock now. I'm gonna put the camera away now, guys. Like I say, we've uh, we've been fishing for what eleven hours so far. With the, we've done one tactic change, and still nothing's happened so far. But like some of the other guys said, if 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 it's anything to go by, the bike should come at night if they do come but yeah so the camera doesn't get all covered in condensation and damp I'm gonna put the camera away now guys uh, it's certainly a nice evening to sit out it's been absolutely boiling today obviously it's cooled down a little bit now tomorrow's gonna get even hotter I believe looking at the weather reports for so I think tomorrow's going to be a day of uh, not doing much and sitting in the shade. <laughs> well, but if not a lot happens by tomorrow morning, we might crack the zigs open tomorrow. Uh, anyway, right, that's enough waffling. Hopefully see you in the night, guys. Well, good morning guys, and <laughs> what a quiet night that was, had a few liners in the night, well, I'm quite sure a lot of it is down to the passing bird life, as I mentioned yesterday there's a fair bit of marginal weed, so the line laying them for about 3-4 rod lengths out isn't brilliant there's not a lot I can do to get it much lower and every time some passing bird life goes past me rod tips it uh, sets me off a little bleep and I'm sure a lot of it was was exactly that just passing bird life 
Uh, yeah, so unfortunately nothing's happened for the first day, first night. We're not quite 24 hours in yet. Uh, nine to the, so we're sort of 22 hours into the session and not a lot has happened. <laughs> not a lot has happened. Nothing's happened. So uh, I'm not going to touch the rods yet. I mean, it is still just gone eight o'clock. Uh, uh, remember when I used to do that and I didn't actually have a watch on? <laughs> I have actually got one on now. My missus made me buy one of these Fitbits so I could track me, you know, how many steps I was taking and me sleep score and... <laughs> and it's a watch. But, so, anyway, yeah, so, yeah, so, anyway, rods are going to stay as they are for at least another hour or two yet. And then uh, the sun is due to uh, come round. What a weird thing to say. Of course the sun's due to come round. It's done it every day. It's done it every day for millions and billions of years. Of course it's due to come round. But what I mean is, the sun is due to get hot. <laughs> it's going to get up to like 27, 28 degrees today, guys. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I think... We might try a day on the zigs later on once I've had some breakfast and, you know, at the moment all I can think of is this grumbling. So once I've got that sorted out, I think I will then uh, try some different tactics. Like I say, if it's going to be really mega hot, I'm sure the, I mean, the fish were on the surface a bit yesterday with it being even hotter today. I'm sure they'll be even more so on the surface today. So... And as I say that, I don't know if you caught that in the background, a, f a fish just boshed out over towards Peg 9 over there. That couldn't have been any more on cue. I'm not sure if it's in shot or not, but... But, yeah, so, um... Yeah. We will, uh, try the zigs today. So the rods will come in at some point. I'll get the marker rod out, see how deep it is. I've got some 12 foot zigs already tied up, ready to go. And then uh, if they do, if they are on the surface, I'll pop down to the van, go and get a bag of dog biscuits, dog biscuits out and then uh, spawn some dog biscuits out to try and get them munching up the surface. Right, I'll leave the camera sort of trained at the rods for a little while and, and then hopefully if anything does happen I can get the take on film. No. Why do people still say that, get the take on film? It's not film, it's a memory card. <laughs> right, anyway, breakfast time, back with you in a bit guys. What's happening on my left rod, guys? Not sure if it's a liner or a slow take, but my bobbin's come up tight. The rod tip is bending around a little bit and a little bit more, so I'm going to hit it. Nasty feeling where the line's snagging on from it. Definitely a fish on, but I can feel the line is snagged up in weed or from it.
don't know how well you can make that out guys but that looks a clean cut there's no scraping on the line or anything I got a feeling that might have been a pike because normally when you get some sort of uh, you know, snagging, you get all scuffing and scraping up your line. That's, that's just a clean cut. Unless it was a zebra mussel or a swan mussel or something like that. Oh well, bugger. <laughs> and guys, so I'm going to be making the switch to zig rigs very shortly, so... Hence why I've got my marker float uh, set up out. Uh, as you can see, the rods are in, obviously. Can't have no lines in the water while I'm trying to find the depths of the area that I want to fish. Oh, and by the way, excuse the, uh, the ridge monkey flannel tucked in the back of me uh, cap, but just gone 10 o'clock and the sun is already scorching so uh because i burn easy <laughs> just tuck me old ridge monkey flannel in the back of me cap just to keep the sun off the back of me neck while i'm kind of facing the lake but hey ho i don't care if it looks silly if it's functional but, but anyway so oh any bugs crawling over me right there are definitely plenty of uh fish on and near the surface already. So Dunk. Right. Yeah. And I did feel it down by the way. Right. Loosen off the drag. So, for those of you who never saw my last video, I'll explain what I do. When I want to find out the depth on my setup, what I do, I first pull off six inches, and that is two foot up already. The reason why that's two foot up already is because the length of my float and the uh, the boom I've got on my uh, marker lead together they're already about a foot and a half long so my first pull is always six inches then that makes two foot up already if that makes sense and then I do one foot which is now three foot four foot five foot six foot Seven foot, eight foot, nine foot, ten foot, eleven foot, oh, twelve foot, exactly twelve foot there, that's about six rod lengths out, which is uh, handy because that's what I've already got tied up. So, Don't want to be quite over depth so the zigs I've already got tied up I might just cut six inches six inches a foot off of them off of them just to make them 11 maybe 11 and a half foot let's go a little bit further out kind of about the range I've been fishing about 10 wraps let's make sure that's on the bottom which it is And then we'll start the so first six inches for two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot, six foot, seven foot, eight foot, nine foot, ten foot, eleven foot, 
12 foot, 13, ah, uh, 13, so yeah. So I can leave the uh, zigs at 12 foot if I fish a bit further out, closer in, I'll cut a foot off of them. And if anyone's asking how, how do I know how, how much I'm pulling off, if, if I'm pulling a foot off, most marker rods these days, including my own, has got a little notch there, which is one foot from the front of the reel so when you're pulling line off you pull a line off to that little notch there then that's when you know you've pulled a foot off let me show you what i was on about before guys so i've got the avid float you know that thing itself is nearly a, a foot long and then with the quarter sort of boom and lead that's got to be sort of sort of six seven inches long so you, so you know what I mean between the two from the from the lead to the top of the float you're already talking you know that they're kind of it's a foot and a half long so imagine that's on the bottom of the lake so so from there to there you've already got a foot and a half so Hence why I do the first pull just six inches and then you know the top of the float is already kind of two foot off of the bottom if you get me. So right so that explains that. Had to do a quick little edit to the video there because someone was trying to call me. <laughs> fish at that kind of range of oh, I'll be all right leaving the rigs at the 12 foot that I've already got them tied at but, but curiosity purposes I'm just going to try and find out where the edge of this weed bed is well can see where the edge of the weed bed is to be fair. <laughs> Believe me, <laughs> there's the weed. Hey guys, so the weed bed went out as far as three rod lengths. So what I've just done now is put an extra wrap on that. So I'm now clipped up at four rod lengths. And I just want to double check that it is clear, just that extra rod length out. Dunk. Well, I felt it hit the bottom then, so... Yeah. Yeah. OK. 
clear at four of length and then hitting that weed. I will do a couple more though, just to make sure it is the same in all directions that I'm going to be casting. Dunk. Yeah, certainly feeling it hit bottom. Oh, actually lands onto a nice little gravel spot at four wraps. <laughs> I might actually use that information and when I go back onto the bottom this evening I might put one of the rigs on that four wrap range just, just so that if the fish are patrolling along the uh, edge of the weed bed Dunk. Oh, yeah, that certainly hits bottom with a nice thud. Oh, yeah, that's a proper little gravel spot at four wraps out. Yeah. yeah, well, it's clear at four wraps out and then hits the weed at three wraps out. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I might use that information this evening and try a little... Uh, try one of my rods at that short range when I go back onto the bottom tonight but right just that curiosity let's see how deep it is at four wraps out Dunk. Ten foot at four wraps out. exactly 12 foot so I think we would do a couple of rods at the 12 foot I've already got tied sort of out in the middle of the lake and then one a bit closer in at 11 foot right guys so I'm in a bit of a tangle with it but I've got my first 12 foot zig tied up that's the problem with long zigs Right, get untangled, there we go. Oh. Right, so. Just simple lead clip system, one of the elongated tail rubbers that I designed for zigging. Uh, one and a half ounce lead, which is more than ample for zig rigging. Anti-tangle sleeve on the hook link. And then at the other end of this 12 foot line, we have got, there we go, size 8 mixer hook, one of the Fox Ziggerliners in red, and black foam, which is uh, 
my preference to how I like to fish a zig rig. All right, there we go, back in shot guys. But I was trying to straighten out that, the long zig. Behind me, we are wrapped up at 10 wraps guys. First one out, and I think I'm down to about seven stone because the rest of it is sweated out of me. <laughs> Still nice and straight, not tangled. Lovely. cast it on top of the fish's head anyway. <laughs> right, that's it, we're now zig fishing for the day. Hi right, guys, because we are fishing with long zigs, one of my landing nets has got this, uh, sort of, what is this, three foot extension handle. Don't ask me what the make is because I really can't, oh, <laughs> don't ask me what the make is. It's Corum. <laughs> it says it here. So, end of the landing net, bung comes off. There we go, and we now have a three foot extension on the, on the landing net. So if we do have any zig captures, it just makes it that little easier to Get out that little bit further to land them with the longer hook links. All right, guys, so the zigs have been out for an hour, maybe an hour and a quarter now. With so far nothing happening, so just down here, I've got a bag of the old dog mixers and uh, just gonna put a few spawns over each rod just to see if I can uh, entice the fish into actually feeding because from what I've been observing so far uh, they're not they're, they're, they're just sunbathing in this uh, in this kind of this midday heat but uh, yeah, so I've, I've already done both wraps. I've wrapped up to six and ten wraps where I've got the zigs out so far. So, obviously, we'll uh, get the uh, six wrap range done first. So, uh, wipe the line. Oh, I'll tell you what. Oh, I thought that was a good idea, but I've just sprayed me glasses. <laughs> right. That was tap water from home, by the way, not lake water or anything like that. bird life will probably um
find these pretty quickly to be fair but we'll have a go anyway like I said nothing ventured nothing gained line at the clip and then we have our next mark already clipped up at 10 wraps so we'll do both the 10 wrap ranges now Once I've done a few spots of dog biscuits over each rod, I'll go and sit back in the shade and clean his water spray off my glasses. <laughs> found the dog mixers on the left rod knew it probably wouldn't take long for them to get on it but I should have brought a bigger bag of uh, mixers to allow for feeding the bird life off first. Right, right so that's the middle rod done. Right, I'm going to do the three over the right hand rod. So I can see clearly. <laughs> I'm going to go and clean my glasses first. Oh, well, guys, hopefully my plan is going to work. It's drifting to the left now, but this kind of slight little bit of clearing in amongst all the uh, pond scum and flotsam and jetsam. That's just where my uh, dog biscuits kind of where the natural oils in them are kind of like cleared everything momentarily but uh yeah there. I did observe at least one carp oh, there we go there's another one so there are some carp at least that have uh, come up to take a mixer or two There we go, there's another one. So, 
There we go. Clearly saw it that time. Right. So hopefully, guys, it won't take long before one of these carpies takes my zig thinking it's one of them mixers. And guys, <coughs> so as I said earlier, the uh, zigs will come in eventually, and then we'll go back on the onto the, the bottom with the PVA bag fishing. So zigs zigs are still out at the moment, but uh, I'm going to put some of the spot in, like I said I was going to do, just to top them spots up, and then earlier on if you remember I said the weed bank only goes about three rod lengths out and there was a nice little gravel bar about four rod lengths out so probably for the middle rod I'm gonna put a few spods on that range just at four wraps out just to see if anything can happen on a close in spot for the night so we are uh, I've got it Clipped up at four wraps already. And I don't have the best underarm cast, but with any luck, I should be able to underarm cast four wraps out. <laughs> Yes, I can. <laughs> so, like I said, we'll just do three on each spot, including this one that hasn't had any bait on it up to now. Remember to take the clip out now for the uh, <laughs> for the other two rods. Sun's not so in my face at the moment, but the sun's over there now, so it's a bit easier to spod. It's a bit later in the day than I normally like to spod, guys, to be fair. I normally like to get any spodding done around midday, one o'clock, two o'clock at the very latest. But if I'd have spodded at that time of day, the sun would have been up there, right in my face, burning me. No. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Right, so that's the three on that rod. Right, I'm gonna do the three on the right hand rod. And then in a little while we'll get the zigs in, get the PVA bags back on and get back out onto them spots. Hey guys, so the first zig rig has been wound in and now swapped over to the uh, solid bag rig for the night. It's a uh, dead on eight o'clock now, so. But, yeah, still really, really warm. Just looked at the uh, weather app on my phone. It's still saying it's 26 degrees, which uh, for eight o'clock in an evening, it's still quite warm, but. Anyway, right, let's waffle, let's get this rod back out on the spot. Alright, here we go guys, middle rod. Clipped up at the massive four wraps range. <laughs> there we go then guys, third and final rod. Uh, finally, things are starting to feel like they're cooling down. I mean, it's 20 to 10. I've just had a me evening barbecue, nice sirloin steak, bit of a uh, bit of pork belly, potato salad, and coleslaw. Very yummy indeed. All washed down with a Copperberg cider. Yum. But, yeah, so I've just uh, set the bobbins as well. <coughs> when I uh, recast rods, you know, when I'm fishing on the bottom, I normally leave the bobbins slack, a bit of slack line for, uh, for normally, I only normally give it half hour, but you know, I did the rods about an hour ago, or hour and a half ago actually, probably. And uh, yeah, I, I've only just set the bobbins now, so so whether I get a drop back or a take. <laughs> what am I thinking? Like that's going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, so I can finally feel like I can start to relax for the evening now. Like I said, the sun has literally just drop down below the horizon and it's finally starting to feel cool I say finally I just looked at my phone it's, it's it's still like 24 25 degrees but anyway right I'm going to sit chill and relax now for the next couple of hours just enjoying these views that are behind me or you know in front of me and then, uh, yeah, that's time to chill and relax now. As I said earlier on, a lot of people went home today. I think there's only me. Yeah, there's only me and one other guy on the lake now in uh, in Peg One. So uh, yeah, almost almost got the lake to uh, to myself. Right, anyway, enough waffle. Hopefully the camera can come out in the night. Fingers crossed. Uh, right, time to chill now, guys. Uh, good morning, everybody. And 
Yep, another quiet night. Yeah, it's getting a bit frustrating now because, you know, I'm almost 48 hours into this session. And for a lake that's uh, generally kind of been good to me in the past, it's deciding this time to give me a bit of a slap around the face and uh, give me a bit of a tough session. Uh, as you can see, the rods are in at the moment. I've just had to do an emergency winding and dash up to the boxes of death. But, uh, yeah, so I mean, it's just coming up for nine o'clock now. So, so we'll uh, we'll get the rods sorted, get the zigs back out. Uh, yeah, I've not long got up. I was a bit tired this morning. I didn't go to bed till one o'clock this morning because, um, well, it was so hot yesterday. I, don't, I didn't feel cool enough to, to be able to sleep comfortably until about, you know, like I said, one o'clock this morning when it was a, uh, it had finally cooled off a bit and I felt like I could sleep properly. And then at half past four this morning, I was rudely awakened by a magpie. But he had me uh, dog biscuits on the uh, this tree stump here. And at half past four this morning, I had a magpie pecking the bag, trying to break it open to get the dog biscuits out. Oh. So yeah, so so why have I only just woke up and started to get things sorted at nine o'clock? <laughs> but anyway. Now we are up, we'll get the rods sorted back out. Like I say, the, the zigs are just draped over me barrow at the moment, so it won't take long to switch everything up. Don't think you see the sky behind me, but we're a lot more overcast this morning, so it's a, it's a little bit cooler today. I mean, it's still warm, but the, luckily there's no direct sunlight burning me at the moment. Uh, yeah, right, that's enough waffle. Let's get the zig, uh, zig rigs back on and get fishing. And then I can get some breakfast then. Right, guys, so uh, as we can see, I've already got two rods out. They're the uh, 12 foot zigs that are out in pretty much mid water. Um, so that can only leave the 11 foot zig that I uh, got left to go out. This one's going to go out, same as yesterday, a bit closer in, just so that, you know, the zig is closer to the, <coughs> closer to the surface near where the fish are topping, which they are already as early as it is and as cloudy as it is. So, uh, right there we are. Yeah, struggling on Hunt's Corner isn't generally some of that normally happens to me, to be fair, but... Oh. I don't know if you saw that right in the background, guys. So that's probably not far off me middle rod, where that fish just head and shouldered out. But, uh, but anyway, right, that's it. Quarter past nine, the zigs are fishing. <sighs> Let's get some breakfast in this belly. Right guys, uh, I'm just in the middle of repositioning the zigs. With it being a bit cooler and a bit more overcast. Not so many fish have been showing out in open water. But the fish I have seen showing have been... Sort of on that far side and up against that tree line so uh, I'm sort of repositioning the rods to be over that side of the lake so uh, I've already done 
the right hand rod and middle rod. So just gonna do the third and final rod. So just make sure the zig is stretched out plenty behind me. So Forget, we're only using one and a half ounce leads on these zigs, so right here we go. Let's double check the zig, no tangles. Probably landed about a rod length for two from the other side. If I remember rightly from previous visits, a rod length for two from the other side is probably about uh, 19, 20 wraps, something like that. And typically, now I've round the rods in and cast them over to the other side, I am now seeing fish back on the surface out in the middle. <laughs> Typical. Right guys, I'm having another stab in the dark with these zigs. Because they were up yesterday and so far, it was near, nearly three o'clock. Sort of, you know, fishing more or less the surface where, you know, I've been seeing the fish and nothing's happened. So I'm trying another tactic and I've cut all the zigs down. So so there's my lead and there's my zig there so we are now going to fish mid water on the zig see what happens so the right hand rod I've already done so I'm not fishing them all the same depth I'm going to stagger them a little bit so the right hand rod I've already done I've cut that one down to 7 foot this one I've cut down to 6 foot and then when I do the left hand rod, I'll cut that one down to five foot. So, you know, we'll fish mid water in stages and see how that goes. But we'll go back to kind of like halfway out again so that I know that they, that they are going to be fishing the mid water depth. Right guys, so I've decided that the zig rigs wasn't working, so I'm going back onto the bottom again with the PVA bags. So, right hand two rods are already done, they're already out and fishing. This is a third and final rod, just put it around the older wrap sticks to get back out at the uh, 11 wrap range, because when this has gone back out I'll uh, top up the spots with a little bit of bait as well. So. So the wraps have just been done and then uh, just to zhuzh the bag up a little bit I've just uh, give it a little boost of some flavoured oil. Right, like I said, this is the third and final rod and this will be my last cast for the evening. It's just coming up to five o'clock now so Unless any fish come along, this will be the last cast of my evening. Lovely. 
lovely jovely. So that is the rods all set, back to fish on the bottom again. I was going to leave it a bit later in the day, but the reason why I switched is uh, there's a couple of guys fishing who have turned up who are fishing in pegs five and six. And they only had the rods out, I think, a few hours, and one of them had had one and he'd caught it off the bottom, so... So that kind of, like, helped make my mind up about switching back to the bottom bait rigs a bit earlier. But, uh... Yeah, nice flat spot out there now with the oil that's come out of them bags. Right, let's get a bit of spot up, refresh them spots with a... A little bit of fresh bait and then I can settle down for the evening then. As I said, I'm just going to do a few a few spots just to uh, top the spots up. So I don't want to put too much more out when, you know, I haven't caught any fish yet, but the smell of some fresh bait on your spot can often do the trick even when you're not catching so, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do guys Right, so that's the three on that rod. So I'll do the three on the other two rods, guys. No, we'll do that off camera. No need to film everything, but uh, yeah. Once I've done six more spots, I can uh, chill for the evening. Go and sit in the shade because I'm <laughs> getting warm. Still nothing happening, guys. I've got to admit, after me uh, last blank on the Tar Farm video sort of, you know, last session, I thought coming to Hunt's Corner, I yeah, like that song, you know, it's always been good to me. It's, I thought, I must admit, I thought this was going to be a bit of a banker to tell you the truth. You know, after a blank, you know, come here, put a few fish on the bank. Hasn't gone like that at all, guys. Like I say, I've, I've done everything I've always done in the past. As you know, with how I'll fish it, solid bags, the fake corn, particle over the top, always worked for me in the past. But for some reason, it just hasn't this time. Uh, anyway, it's, what's the time now? It's, it's not late, it's half eight. But the rain's just starting to spit a little bit, so I'm going to put the camera away in a minute before the rain gets too heavy. I've just been having a bit of a tidy up and a bit of a pack up, because it's an early pack up with Hunt's Corner being on the catch booking system now. I've got to be off at nine o'clock tomorrow morning for uh, potentially someone else who might turn up in this swim at 10 o'clock. If there is anyone booked on, I don't know, I haven't looked, but uh, but yeah, but my session comes to an end at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. So, uh, so I've just been packing up all my little fiddly bits that I don't need anymore. You know, cookware, tackle items, you know, if I do need to do any more casts, I've got three more PVA bags already made up, so I'm all right on that side of things. <laughs> if <laughs> I should catch, 
So, yeah, so tomorrow morning I'll be pretty much getting up, packing up, and uh, and, and going home. So, uh, yeah, with, with the rain coming, coming down now, I'm going to put the camera away. And I might even call it an end to this video here because I'm, I'm probably, unless anything happens fishing wise in the night. This will be the end of the video, guys. Yeah, you can shut up more then. But, uh, yeah, I mean, check the timeline. If, if there is a bit more space on the timeline, you know, some has happened during the night or in the early hours of the morning. <laughs> if that timeline is nearly finished, then this is the end of the video, guys, because, um, yeah, I won't get the camera out in the morning if nothing's happened. I'll just call it a day to the video here. So hopefully there's a bit more space on that timeline. <laughs> but if nothing else does happen, guys, thanks for watching. So, unless anything does happen in the night, Unfortunately, it's been a blank, and I'm not, I'm not only gutted for you guys watching, I'm gutted myself, because, as I said, I thought this would be a bit of a banker, this session. Right, anyway, bye for now. Hopefully there will be more footage. Camera's going away now because it's raining, so I'll either see you in the night or see you in the next video.